What if most of those weird electrical problems that drive you insane could be erased in under 30 seconds, without a scan tool, without diagnostics, and without spending a single dollar? It sounds too good to be true, but this is exactly what serious repair shops do before they start blindly replacing modules. Think about it for a second. How many times have you seen random warning lights, door locks acting possessed, a transmission shifting strangely, climate control doing its own thing, or systems failing for no clear reason? And then the answer is always the same, it's electrical, we need an expensive diagnosis. But what if a huge percentage of those issues weren't real failures at all, but simply electronic garbage stuck inside control modules that nobody ever resets properly? In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step procedure used in real workshops across the United States to reset the entire electrical system, from the engine control module to body modules, sensors, and learned adaptations. Stay until the very end, because the most aggressive trick, the one that forces the car to reboot almost like it just rolled out of the factory, is saved for number one, and it's the method that fixes the most problems without replacing a single part. Number 11. Disconnecting the negative battery terminal. This is where everything starts. Disconnecting the negative terminal is not a ritual or superstition, it's pure electrical safety. You always start with the negative because it's connected to ground. Once it's off, you break the circuit and eliminate the risk of a tool touching metal and the positive terminal at the same time, which would create a spectacular short circuit. Before touching anything, the car must be completely off. Key out of the ignition, push button systems power down, doors closed or at least not constantly open so interior lights and modules don't wake up repeatedly. Once the negative terminal is removed, many control modules lose their backup power supply and after a few minutes they truly shut down. ECUs that were frozen, systems with minor communication errors, or temporary parameters stuck in memory often return to a neutral state. Of course, it's not free of side effects. You may lose radio presets, clock settings, power window memories, idle adaptations, and the engine may need a short drive cycle to relearn driving behavior. This is not something you do every week for fun, but when a car starts acting crazy with warning lights or strange behavior after repair, this is the first serious shop-level step. Number 10. Pressing the brake pedal to discharge residual power. With the negative terminal already disconnected, comes a move that looks like a joke but is based on solid electronics. Pumping the brake pedal several times. Why does this matter if the battery is disconnected? Because in modern vehicles, not all electrical energy disappears instantly when you remove the battery cable. Many modules contain capacitors and internal circuits that hold a charge for seconds or even minutes. Every time you press the brake pedal, you request electrical power from a system that no longer has a battery supplying it, forcing those capacitors to dump whatever energy they still hold. Think of it as squeezing the very last drops of electricity out of the vehicle's electrical network so the shutdown is as deep as possible. From the outside, you only see a pedal moving up and down. On the inside, volatile memories stop feeding microcontrollers, and those controllers finally shut down completely. When you reconnect the battery later, many modules truly restart from zero, without leftover states that sometimes trap them in stupid error loops. This only works after disconnecting the battery. It's not a magic trick if everything is still connected. Number 9. Bridging the positive and negative cables with the battery removed. This is the step that separates a trained technician from someone copying things off the internet without understanding them. The concept is simple but extremely delicate. With the battery completely removed from the vehicle, you take the car's positive cable and negative cable and briefly connect them together for a few seconds. Since there is no battery in the system, there is no power source to create a major short circuit. What you are doing is equalizing electrical potential across the entire system and providing a path for any leftover residual charge hiding in the wiring or modules to fully discharge. It's like gathering all the remaining stray electricity and dumping it at once. In some vehicles, this step helps stubborn modules that don't reset with a simple battery disconnect, especially body control modules, airbag systems, or comfort modules that stay semi-alive on extremely low voltage. Where is the danger? Doing it wrong. If someone attempts this with the battery still installed, they create a direct short between positive and negative, producing sparks, melted cables, blown fuses, and potentially a destroyed battery. Even with the battery removed, 
Some newer vehicles and certain manufacturers advise against this method because sensitive modules may not tolerate abrupt discharges if done carelessly or because they prefer guided resets using diagnostic equipment. That's why, even though this is a real shop trick, it's not a game. Always with the battery removed, keys away, no active consumers, the vehicle fully asleep, and only when you're chasing a deep electrical reset after simpler steps failed. Done correctly, these three steps can erase phantom faults and bizarre behavior in seconds. Done blindly, they can turn a simple reset into the most expensive electrical failure of the month. Many electrical resets fail not because the trick doesn't work, but because people rush the one step where patience matters most. Number 8. Waiting at least 30 seconds for full discharge. After disconnecting the negative terminal, and after pressing the brake pedal or bridging cables if necessary, comes the most underestimated step of all, waiting. Those 30 seconds, or even a bit more, are not arbitrary. They are the time needed for internal modules, capacitors, and circuits to truly shut down. Inside the vehicle, small energy reserves keep certain chips alive for a short period, even with no battery connected. If you reconnect too quickly, some control units never fully power down, and your deep reset becomes a half reset. That half reset is where many problems survive. Those quiet seconds, with the car untouched, doors closed, no buttons pressed, are when the last traces of energy disappear and modules accept a true fresh start. Be impatient, and the system remembers. Respect the wait, and your reset becomes very close to what a calm, experienced technician would do in a professional shop. Number 7. Safe Reconnection of the Negative Battery Terminal When it's time to bring the system back to life, there is also order and method. First, make sure everything is completely off. Key out, push-button systems asleep, lights in the off position, and no doors opening and closing like crazy. You place the negative terminal onto the battery post firmly and decisively, no half-contact, no hesitation, no letting it spark while you see what happens. A clean, solid connection from the first touch avoids false contacts, micro power cuts, and unnecessary sparks that scare people but also confuse sensitive electronics. Tightening the clamp properly is critical. A loose terminal can cause intermittent electrical faults, dashboard lights that come and go, weak starts, or ridiculous fault codes that nobody can later explain. A surprising amount of mysterious electronics problems are caused by nothing more than a battery terminal that isn't tight. This safe reconnection step is what separates a stable electrical system from a festival of phantom failures. Number 6. Engine Control Module Reset This is where you really feel the effect of the procedure. When power is restored, the engine control module wakes up as if it just came back from a full blackout, without recent adaptations, without learned corrections, and often without minor errors that were stuck in memory. During the first seconds and first few miles, you may notice a slightly different idle, automatic shifts that feel a bit awkward, or throttle response that isn't as smooth as before. That doesn't mean the car is damaged. It means the ECU is relearning from scratch. Air fuel mixture, engine load, driving style, accessory use like air conditioning, all of that is recalculated again. After a few minutes of gentle driving and some progressive acceleration, the ECU rebuilds its adaptation tables and if there were no real mechanical problems, many hesitations, odd vibrations, or increased fuel consumption simply disappear. A proper ECU reset is not black magic. It's giving the engine's brain a chance to forget bad electronic habits and recalibrate to the car's current condition, not how it was thousands of miles ago. Combined with the other steps, this turns a simple battery disconnect into a true workshop-level trick that surprises a lot of drivers with how well it works. Many modern cars don't run badly because of the engine itself, they run badly because the electronics are confused, and this is where the difference becomes obvious. Number 5. Transmission Control Module Reset If your automatic transmission shifts strangely, hesitates, makes light jerks, or holds gears for no logical reason, many times it's not broken. It's adapted itself to the worst version of your driving or to past issues. Modern transmissions learn. They memorize how you accelerate, how much load you apply, whether you drive more city or highway, and even how you treat the throttle pedal. Over time, changes in drivers, repairs, or very inconsistent driving can contaminate those adaptation maps, and the transmission starts to feel clumsy. 
When you perform a deep electrical reset with the battery disconnected, residual discharge completed, and proper waiting time, the transmission module loses part of those learned behaviors. In some vehicles, the difference is immediate. The first drives after the reset feel different. Shifts may happen earlier or later than you're used to, sometimes a bit firm, sometimes too soft. That's not a fault. That's factory mode, like the car just left the dealership and doesn't yet know who's driving it. The key after this reset is proper retraining. A few minutes of smooth driving, progressive acceleration, no racing, no aggressive manual shifting. The goal is to teach the module how you want it to behave, starting from zero and without bad habits. If the transmission is mechanically healthy, many minor jerks, strange slips, and illogical shifts are reduced or disappear after this relearning phase. The problem is that many people reset the system, notice the behavior changed, panic, and assume something went wrong, when in reality the module is doing exactly what it should. Patience and consistent throttle input are part of the real trick. Number 4. Electric Power Steering System Reset Electric power steering also has its own brain. It doesn't just help you turn the wheel. It adjusts steering weight based on speed, compensates for road crown, and in some cases even counteracts crosswinds or uneven surfaces. When this system starts to feel strange, heavier to one side, steering will not returning properly to center, assistance coming and going, there's often nothing physically broken. Many times it's a calibration issue or a module confused by low battery voltage, voltage spikes, or poorly finished repairs. After a full electrical system reset, the steering may start in a basic mode. Many vehicles require a simple centering procedure, slowly turning the steering wheel from lock to lock, returning to center, driving straight for a short distance, or simply driving for a while so the module can relearn angles and return to its normal map. During the first minutes, the steering may feel slightly different, heavier, lighter, or with the wheel just a bit off center. In most cases, the system recalibrates itself while driving if all sensors are healthy. The important point is understanding that electric power steering depends directly on the electrical network you just reset. If you previously had small steering jerks, random warnings, or inconsistent assistance caused by unstable voltage, a proper reset and solid battery reconnection can stabilize everything. However, if after the reset you get persistent warning lights or the steering becomes very heavy, then you are no longer dealing with adaptation. At that point, the workshop trick is telling you clearly, there is a real mechanical or electronic issue that needs to be inspected. Number 3. Air Conditioning and Climate Control System Reset Air conditioning looks simple from the outside, but behind the dashboard it's a network of interior and exterior temperature sensors, motorized blend doors, actuators, memory of the last settings, and in many vehicles, energy-saving strategies tied to battery voltage and engine load. Over time, strange issues start to appear. Air blowing from the wrong vents, cabin temperature that doesn't match what you set, a blower fan that seems possessed, or a compressor that cycles on and off with no clear logic. A lot of that behavior can come from corrupted commands or confused memories inside the climate control module. After a deep electrical reset, this system usually returns to a standard default mode. Medium temperature, basic air distribution, fan speed set to predefined values. Yes, you'll likely lose your favorite settings like recirculation, feet-only airflow, or custom fan preferences, but in exchange you give the module a chance to forget bad decisions it made when a sensor was giving nonsense readings. In some vehicles, the internal air doors even recalibrate themselves automatically after the reset, sweeping from end to end to find their limits and then settling where they belong. If one of those doors was electronically stuck halfway, this process can bring it back into line. The key here is simple. After the reset, don't start changing settings 20 times in the first few seconds. Let the system work for a moment, set a reasonable temperature, and allow pressures and sensor readings to stabilize. If the issue was internal logic and not low refrigerant or a damaged compressor, many of those inconsistencies disappear. What felt like a temperamental climate system can go back to behaving like a normal one. If, after the reset, it still doesn't cool, the fan doesn't respond, or a warning stays solid on the dashboard, the reset already did its job. It's telling you the problem is physical, not software, and that's when real diagnostic tools are needed, not tricks. 
Many cars that seem electrically haunted don't have a demon inside. They have modules and sensors full of electronic junk that nobody ever resets properly. And that leads us to the two most powerful steps of this entire procedure. Number 2. Body Control Module Reset The Body Control Module, or BCM, is the brain behind everything that isn't engine or transmission. Interior lights, central locking, key fobs, wipers, door locks, fog lights, dashboard messages, and communication with other modules all run through it. When the festival of weird behavior starts, lights staying on for no reason, turn signals acting erratic, locks refusing to cooperate, alarms triggering randomly, the BCM is often the real culprit. Over the years, it accumulates small errors, voltage spikes, and conflicting commands. A deep electrical reset, done correctly, forces it back into a much cleaner baseline state. By cutting battery power, discharging residual energy, waiting properly, and reconnecting the system the right way, the BCM forgets certain temporary memories, restores default parameters, and re-establishes communication with other modules from scratch. After this, it's common during the first startup to see a brief light show or hear clicks and sounds as the system performs internal checks, almost like the car just left the factory. Then, many intermittent faults simply vanish. Key fobs become consistent again. Lights stop acting crazy. False door open or hood open warnings disappear. There is a trade-off, though. Resetting the BCM can erase some personalizations. Courtesy light timing, auto-lock behavior while driving, comfort features, welcome settings. Nothing breaks, it just returns to standard mode. That's why this reset isn't a party trick. It's used when you're genuinely chasing strange electrical problems that don't respond to fuses or basic inspections. In a workshop environment, this BCM reset is a powerful tool to pull a vehicle out of an electronic nonsense loop before anyone starts replacing expensive parts blindly. Number 1. Full Sensor and Adaptation Reset This is where the workshop trick shows its full potential. After a complete power cut and proper discharge, the vehicle is forced to make all its sensors and adaptations start again from zero. Think about how much your car learns over time. How you brake. How you accelerate. How much city driving you do. How dirty the air filter gets. How the throttle body wears. How the transmission loosens up. How fuel mixture changes with different gasoline blends. All of that is stored in correction and adaptation tables so the car can adjust itself to reality. The problem is that reality also includes bad habits, half-worn components, and temporary errors that got stuck along the way. When a full reset is done correctly, many of those corrections are wiped. Oxygen sensors, temperature sensors, mass airflow sensors, throttle position, fuel pressure behavior, pedal position, transmission logic, steering assist, climate control. All of them are forced to measure again from scratch and adapt to what they are actually seeing today. In practice, this often means the car feels a bit strange at first. Idle may be different, throttle response unfamiliar, shifts not exactly where you remember them, climate airflow behaving slightly differently. That's normal. The car is recalculating who you are as a driver and the true condition of its components. The payoff comes after. If there was no serious physical failure and the issue was old adaptations or values skewed by past readings, behavior improves noticeably. Fuel consumption drops back down, minor hesitations disappear, idle stabilizes, the transmission chooses more logical gears again, and even cold starts feel healthier. It's like telling the car, forget everything you thought you knew about me and start observing from zero. This full reset does not replace real diagnostics. If the same symptoms return, the same warning lights come back, or clearly abnormal behavior persists, the trick has already done its job. It proved the problem isn't just electronic memory, but a component or system that is genuinely failing. But when used with judgment as part of an organized process, this is exactly the real workshop technique many professional mechanics use before swapping expensive parts, wiping the electronic slate clean, and letting the car speak again with fresh data.